Stan Jabalisco here with a brief explanation of what exactly scientists mean when they tell us we're going to have a geomagnetic storm. A geomagnetic storm. Sounds like something out of science fiction, doesn't it? You know, geomagnetic or a magnetic storm would create all of this disruption in the transporters and all that other sort of stuff. Well, I suppose that it would. I suppose that a lot of that uh, stuff is based pretty much on fact. And what starts a geomagnetic storm is an event called a solar flare, which is basically kind of like a volcano on the sun, except bigger. And instead of just dust and magma and rocks and ash and things like that coming out of it, we get magnetic fields and subatomic particles, atomic nuclei like protons and alpha particles and other sorts of charged particles. So what happens here is, well, let me put this over just a little bit farther and make it a little more fun for you to watch in all of its drama. Let's make it red, even though it's more like yellow or white. There's the sun. We get a solar flare on the sun. Let's make that green. If you've seen pictures of the sun called heliographs, helio meaning sun, graph meaning image, image of the sun, Specialized computer enhanced and processed images called heliographs. You have seen solar flares in all of their drama. Solar prominences and the corona and the various features of the surface of the sun as it would look if you had super dark film negatives across your eyes with special wavelength filters and all that cool stuff. So here's the sun solar flare and here way over here the little speck of dust on which we carry on our daily existences the earth now the earth has a magnetic field around it sort of like the field around a bar magnet magnetic lines of flux like this sort of like you would get around a bar magnet if you've ever seen a bar magnet except the charged particles the constant streaming of charged particles from the sun blows literally blows the contours of this magnetic field downwind as it were from the earth distorting that field and that stream of particles always occurs. It's a normal state of affairs, and it's called the solar wind. I don't know if you've ever heard about a special kind of a spaceship that's been contemplated called a solar sail, or a special way of propelling a spaceship called a solar sail. It would have a huge reflective sheet of lightweight material that would catch this solar wind and literally let us go out to the outer reaches of the solar system and to come back in we'd have to tack into the solar wind just like old-fashioned sailing vessels would do back in the time of mutiny on the bounty and all that kind of stuff anyway we've got a normal solar wind now what happens what tends to occur when there's a geomagnetic storm it's preceded by a solar flare, always a solar flare takes place and it increases the magnitude of this solar wind tremendously. That increase in the magnitude of the solar wind is largely comprises charged particles and when those charged particles get near the Earth's magnetic field 
That magnetic field accelerates them towards the geomagnetic poles, and then we see a phenomenon which anybody who lives in extreme northerly or southerly latitudes has certainly seen. Aurora, which means light. For example, Aurora Borealis, northern lights. We also witness other effects in the Earth's geomagnetic field. That field becomes highly unstable, and the movement of all of those charged particles from the sun, including the ions in the Earth's own ionosphere, ions being charged atoms, they're all in a state of agitation, they're in a state of chaos. And when you have charged particles accelerating, that means not only moving, but changing speed with time, or changing velocity with time, you get electromagnetic energy, EM fields, which on the shortwave radio bands turn out to be radio chaos. And as a result, the short wave radio bands, which allow you to listen to stations and communicate from one side of the world to the other via the ionosphere, all of that apparatus that nature provides for us, free of charge, collapses. And we get a cessation of propagation conditions in the Earth's ionosphere. And as a result of that, you're listening to a signal, a shortwave radio signal, and these charged particles arrive, and within minutes, that signal may disappear. And it may last for days. Now, the news media have made a big deal out of all of this. They call it a geomagnetic storm, or a solar event, or a solar flare, and they've tried to strike terror into the hearts of ordinary citizens thinking, uh, you know, what with the recent cold wave that we've had, what with the recent events in all sorts of parts of the world, human-made and nature-made, all sorts of terrible crises, and they're blowing this up into a crisis. The problem is, we have a very fragile infrastructure these days. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that we've created a utility grid and an internet and a communications network and a way of staying in touch with each other and making our systems operate in such a way that they are highly vulnerable to the effects of geomagnetic storms, something that didn't used to be the case even as recently as the 1950s and 60s. But now we've got apparatus that can not only be disrupted, but in some cases actually destroyed by a very, very intense geomagnetic storm, which someday will occur. Someday we will see a geomagnetic storm that makes us wish that we had built our infrastructure more robustly. Back in the year 1859, a tremendously powerful event, solar flare, geomagnetic storm, they didn't exactly know how it worked back then, but they saw what it did. The electromagnetic fields created by that geomagnetic storm were powerful enough that they caused current surges in telegraph wires that actually set some telegraph stations on fire. Just as if those lines had been struck by lightning. That's going to happen someday. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. But, of course, now every time there's a geomagnetic storm, it's like every time there's a little cough, you think, I wonder if it's pneumonia. Well, maybe one day it will be pneumonia. That did happen to me, by the way, and I didn't think it was pneumonia. 
till the doctors hijack me and put me in the hospital. So crises will occur. But just remember what the venerable Mark Twain said. Life is just a series of catastrophes. 95% of which never occur. Of course, 5% of them do, but there's no sense fretting about them. Better to start building our utility grid in a more robust fashion right now. The only question is, where's the money going to come from? Aha! <laughs> Show me the money. Stan Jabalisco signing off from the Black Hills, also known as Paha Sapa where the Native American Lakota people come to pray for the state of the world, perhaps, to pray that we'll build a more robust infrastructure. Maybe. I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask them. Until next time, so long.